Hi there. This lecture we're going to look at characteristics of waves. This is heat four of unit eight. Our key ideas, uh, what are some ways to measure and compare waves? How can you calculate the speed of a wave? And why does the pitch of an ambulance siren change as the ambulance rushes past you? All right, start looking at this first question. We're looking at the wave properties. So amplitude and wavelength are measurements of distance. A period and frequency are measurements based on time. So period and frequency are more of a speed type of uh, measurement, whereas amplitude and wavelength are going to be distances. So amplitude measures the amount of particle vibration. And the amplitude is defined as the maximum distance that the particles of a wave's medium vibrate from their rest position. So for a transverse wave, this is measured from the rest position to the crest or the trough. And we typically measure this in the SI unit of meters. <clears throat> so the rest position is basically this dotted or dashed line that the wave oscillates above and below. So this is considered the rest position. And the amplitude is just that distance between the crest, or we could do from the bottom of a trough to that rest position. So it's how high or how below, how low that uh, wave is below that resting position. And then wavelength is the distance between two equivalent parts of a wave. So we can measure between the crest of two different waves, or we can measure between the trough of two different waves, or we could measure in the middle of one wave, say this is on the downward slope here, we can measure on the downward slope of the next wave. So those are all areas that we can measure wavelength. This is a transverse wave. It's a little bit more challenging on a longitudinal wave, but a wavelength is either between these rarefactions or between these compression uh, locations on a wavelength. So we can define wavelength as the distance from any point on a wave to an identical point on the next wave. So for transverse, uh, this is measured from crest to crest or trough to trough. And we use the Greek letter lambda. So we use this little symbol. This is the Greek letter lambda to represent wavelength. And this is also expressed in meters, so we use the SI unit for meters. Amplitude and wavelength tell us about energy. The larger amplitude, more energy, so the higher the wave goes below or above the resting position, the more energy that wave has. A shorter wavelength equals more energy, so uh, the more f often these wavelengths repeat, more energy because that wavelength is repeating more frequently. So a shorter wavelength is more energy. All right, the period is a measurement of the time it takes for a wave to pass a given point. So we can define period in physics, the time that it takes a complete cycle or wave oscillation to occur. So like how long does it take for a wavelength to repeat itself? Uh, we use the period T, or the symbol T, sorry, and we measure this in seconds. So period is measured in seconds. So here in this diagram, um, t the time or the period is two seconds. So we can look how long does it take. So here's this uh, crest, and then it goes down and continues to move, so it's up here and then it, it's moving along, so here's one second and then it gets to this individual after two seconds. Just, just an example. So frequency is a measurement of vibration rate. So we define this as the number of cycles or vibrations per unit of time, also the number of waves produced in a given amount of time. We represent frequency with lowercase f and this is expressed in the SI unit hertz and actually we can also call it inverse seconds uh, we can represent one over s or s to the negative one 
um, but we can change that to just equal hertz. So hertz is just how many cycles or how many vibrations we have per second. And we change that from cycles to per second to hertz. So in this diagram, our frequency is half a hertz, or 0 0.5 hertz. So we've got two seconds. Well, we can inverse the period. So two seconds becomes uh, one over two, which is one half. So that's that's another way to do it too, to go from frequency to period. We can just invert the value. So the frequency and period of wave are related uh, inversely, like I was just saying. So frequency equals one over the period, or the frequency is one over t, so one over the period. Or we can flip it and say the period is one over the frequency. So we can flip both sides. So uh, next thing we have is wave speed. How do we calculate wave speed? The speed of wave is equal to wavelength divided by the period or to frequency multiplied by the wavelength. So two different ways to solve the same thing uh, depending on whether we're given period or frequency. So wave speed equals the wavelength divided by the period <coughs> if we're give or if we are able to find the period. And speed is always measured in distance divided by time. So wave speed equals the wavelength, which is the distance between two identical points on the wave, divided by the period or divided by the time it takes to move that distance. So speed uh, we can represent as v equals lambda divided by t. V equals yeah, lambda divided by t, or um, wavelength divided by the period. Uh, wave speed also equals the frequency times time, so we can invert the time component of this uh, because we said frequency is 1 over t. Oops, sorry. So wave speed can also be the frequency times the wavelength, or V equals frequency times wavelength. and this should be a lambda. So, uh, let's look at an example. Strings of a piano that produces the note middle C vibrate with a frequency of 262 hertz, or 262 cycles per second. It's another way to represent hertz, or vibrations per second. Uh, different ways you can say the same thing. If the sound waves produced by this string have a wavelength in the air of 1.3 meters, What's the speed of the sound wave? So we're given frequency and wavelength, right? So we're going to list our given values. Frequency is 262 hertz. Our wavelength is 1.30 meters. And we want to know the wave speed. So to find the wave speed, we just take the frequency times lambda. And we'll plug these values in. 262 hertz times 1.3 meters. And we can rewrite hertz as 1 over seconds. So we basically have meters over seconds. So that's how we get this meter slash s. So the multiplication or multiplying these two numbers gives us a product of 341 meters per second as our wave speed. Uh, so the wave speed can depend on the medium. So the substance that it's traveling through. Is it water? Is it air? Is it a uh, solid surface, the table? So generally, <clears throat> wave speed is greatest in solids and least in gases. So in a given medium, the speed of waves is constant. And then kinetic theory explains differences in wave speed. A light has a finite speed, so we can't change or, or adjust the speed of light. It's always constant. If this were able to change, then we'd have some issues with some other things. So uh, speed of light is constant. We use the symbol lowercase c. So we have 3.00 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. I think it actually is like 2.998 or something like that. So it's easy just to round it up so we have an easier number to deal with. So really big number. It's really fast. And then we can talk about electromagnetic waves as well. <clears throat> so the speed of light for an electromagnetic wave is equal to the frequency times the wavelength. All right, finally, the Doppler effect. Uh, why does the pitch of an ambulance siren change as the ambulance rushes past? 
So motion between the source of a wave and the observer creates a change in observed frequency. So the frequency is constant, but because the, the position relative to the observer is changing, that gives you a different frequency. So pitch is another word we use, de determined by the frequency of sound waves. Define pitch as um, of a sound, how high or low it is. <clears throat> it's determined by the frequency at which sound waves strike the eardrum in your ear. A higher pitched sound is caused by sound waves of higher frequency. Frequency changes when the source of the waves is moving. And we can call this the Doppler effect. So the Doppler effect is defined as an observed change in the frequency of a wave when the source or observer is moving. Doppler effect occurs for many types of waves, including sound waves and light waves. One quick note, uh, if we think about an ambulance or a train that's coming towards us, um, the frequency or the pitch of that sound will actually be at a higher frequency when that object is coming towards you, but then because all those sound waves are compressed, but then when that object's past you, those sound waves will spread back out, are going to be farther apart, so then the frequency or the pitch decreases, the frequency decreases. So, thanks for listening.